Yesterday we did not know about science, we believe world was science, we believed it, no problem. But today, you will say, because my father believed world is science, will you believe the world is science? No. Never. You respect your father. That's right. You respect him, but you won't believe him. Yes. Correct? Yes. The same way you respect, no problem. But you have to believe in the Quran, which is impeccable, which is proved scientifically. Assalamu alaikum sir. Uh, my name is Ram. I work for a bank here. And uh, I have some couple of questions which you answered already, but I, want to, I want, just want to have a reiterate of uh, what you have told to, to, to us. It's like, uh, we have a lot of, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Hindu, within this of course. So uh, I have been uh, come across Vedas, not read actually. I know that there are four Vedas, a lot of Upanishads, a lot of uh, uh, ba Mahabharat, Bhagavadam and all those things in our religion. In Islam we have Quran, in Christianity we have uh, Bible. And I just want to uh, make it up on this subject actually, where uh, you say it is compatible, the Quran is compatible with the scientific, uh, modern scientific uh, methodology. But I just want to know which book will be more compatible or more precise. Uh, as you told, it, the old books which have already been uh, covered for the last or the last generation or previous generations. But since the, those uh, Vedas and all those Upanishads are very vast, it would have been covered and a lot of things and the Quran may be the precise one of that or Bible may be more precise, precise of that so according to the you know, the written uh, periods so how do you say that sir? Uh, what, what, what will be your uh, suggestion on that? There are the question that all the other scriptures, the Bible and the Veda, the Upanishad, are they are they scientific or not? They are more vast Correct? That's right. Sir. Now when you come to the vastness, how have they become vast? For example, you have mentioned Mahabharata. Now Mahabharata originally, it was a story told by the grandson of Arjun. It contained 8,000 shlokas. How many? 8,000. 8,000. Today, the Mahabharata contains more than 100,000 shlokas. Where did it come from? Interpolation. Addition. Okay. If you see Mahabharata on the television, you know Mahabharata? Yes, sir. Television serial. Yes. There you saw Maruti Ka in the background. <laughs> now, how did Maruti Ka come in Mahabharata? Okay. So these additions. Okay. Additions. So yes. as additions keep on coming, it cannot be the word of God. Okay. So that's the reason it has become voluminous because of additions. Yes, sir. So therefore, if you if you put science as a test, as a yastik, all the other scriptures, whether it be the Bible, whether it be Mahabharata, whether it be they fail the test. There are many unscientific things mentioned in the Bible. Many unscientific mentioned in the Vedas, in the Mahabharata. How can you assume the word of God? Even if you say it was, then maybe it was. Even if it was, it has changed. And even if it was the word of God, it was meant for those people for that time. Today you have to follow the last and final revelation, the glorious Quran, because it was not only revealed for the Muslims or the Arab, it was revealed for the whole of humankind. And if you put it to the test of science, this Quran passes the test. Hope that answers the question, brother. That's fine, sir. But uh, the knowledge which provided by the our Vedas has already been given knowledge for the people who are been there the previous previous generations. That's right. So uh, they will be. It's their duty to take it up. Brother, so if, you have a, if you have a old old model, new model, which will you prefer? Are you new model or the old model? Of course, new model has been come because of the old model was ah, already old been constructed. Old model is gone. Old model may have mistakes. From old model, we have taken the new model. Correct. But yes. the old model may have mistakes also, na? Old That's model right. may be wrong also. But uh, right, so the old model may be right, may be wrong. Correct? It's not that it has to be right. So when you have the latest model, the Quran, without any mistake, without any flaw, you have to follow the latest model, which we did not know we followed, no problem. So now you when you have come to know, yesterday we did not know about science, we believe world was science, we believed it, no problem. But today, you will say, because my father believed world is science, will you believe the world is science? No. Never. You respect your father. That's right. You respect him, but you won't believe him. Yes. Correct? Yes. The same way you respect, no problem. But you have to believe in the Quran, which is impeccable, which is proved scientifically. It's a miracle of miracles, which prove itself with the word of God in the last day of judgment. Hope that answers the question. That's right, sir. And it's more privilege to be here for, in front of you. And thanks a lot for the uh, management for this. Thanks. Brother, do you believe in one God? I believe in God. One God or many gods? 
I believe in God. That's it. I don't know it's one or many, no, no. but it's it is everywhere. Believe in God, God is or everywhere. In God or gods? God is everywhere. No, you believe in God or do you believe in gods? God. God means one God. Yes. In English, God means one. Can't be two. That's right. If it's two, it becomes God. So one God or God is same thing. Yes. Believe in one God. Yes. Do you believe in idol worship? You said you are a Vedantist. I do. But you said you are a Vedantist. How do you believe in idol worship? Vedantist is a Hindu, right? Mean no, Vedantist, actual. Vedantist is fun to follow the Vedas. Okay. It's mentioned in Yajur Veda, chapter number 32, verse number 3. Na tasya pratima asti. Of that God, there is no pratima. Pratima means image, photograph, picture, painting. Of that God, there is no pratima. There is no image. There is no photograph. There is no painting. There is no picture. There is no sculpture. There is no statue. There is no idol. How come you are calling yourself a Vedantist? You are not a Vedantist. You are a pseudo Vedantist. But uh, I believe that means we haven't read your Veda. That means you have you rightly said you have not read your Veda. Go home and read your Veda. That's right. And see my video cassette similarities between Islam and Hinduism. Sure, sir. And there I've quoted the Veda that Veda is against idol worship. Okay. You should stop idol worship. Believe in one God, stop idol worship and believe in the true God. Oh. And also your Vedas say about the last and final messenger to come, Prophet Muhammad. So read the Vedas. Hear my hear my video cassette. Similar to Islam and Hinduism, and inshallah Allah will guide you the trip path. Yes, so one more question, if you don't mind. Yes, brother. So you said it is more compatible, the Quran is more compatible for the scientific world. So why don't the scientists study the Quran and do their innovations or Mashallah, work very on good. it? Very good, very good question. If Quran is compatible with science, why don't the scientists study the Quran and do it? That's what they're doing. That's what Keith Moore did. Keith Moore did that, na? Okay. When he found out from the Quran, he wrote a new book, a new edition. He got the award for the best medical book written by a single author. He did it. There are many one doing. Some understand, some don't understand. You have to keep on reading and reading. As you keep on reading, you understand better. As science advances, you better understand the Quran better. And there are yet many things in, in the Quran which science hasn't discovered yet. So you have to do more research on the Quran so that you will understand science better. Hope that answers the question. Yes, sir. Thank you.